Three, two, one. Can you see these small purple crystals? If I mix them with this liquid, it generates a lot of steam. The liquid in question is not water. It actually had a code name during the Second World War. It was called t stuff and the purple crystals were called z stuff The reason why they had code names is because they were part of a secret project called the Gulstungswaffen, which translates to vengeance weapons. This reaction was used to power high-speed turbines that would rotate high-flow pumps that would push propellant into the combustion chamber of rocket engines. But not any rocket engines. We're talking about the V2 rocket, the grandfather of all liquid-fueled rockets. This reaction fascinates me very much, but the most surprising thing about this reaction is that it's not a reaction at all. This video was brought to you by Nebula, a platform full of exclusive content made by creators like myself. Would you like to watch a video where I build a functional replica of the V2 rocket? More about Nebula at the end of the video. When I mix the two compounds together, what happens is not a chemical reaction, but in fact, a decomposition. The compound by the name of Z-Stoff is potassium permanganate. It's used as a fertilizer, so it's super easy to find anywhere. The transparent liquid by the code name of T-Stoff is hydrogen peroxide, also a very common item that anyone can find at home. Except, that is not really true. If you tried to use common hydrogen peroxide you can find at your home to replicate my results, you would probably be disappointed because this is 3% hydrogen peroxide and this is 50%. At this concentration is not super dangerous. If you drop it on your skin, you get a white spot that disappears after a few hours. Just keep it away from your eyes. The one they used for the V2 rocket was 85% concentration. Now at this concentration it becomes very dangerous. It will ignite almost anything, destroy organic matter very quickly and decompose in milliseconds if something as common as dust touches it. Decomposing is what it does. Hydrogen peroxide will naturally decompose into non-toxic gases, but that process normally takes ages. What the potassium permanganate does is accelerate that process aggressively. You see, when you decompose hydrogen peroxide, you get three things. Heat, steam and oxygen. A lot of oxygen. I made a small chamber where I mixed hydrogen peroxide with a solution of water and potassium permanganate. And the result was fine, but as you can see the exhaust is not just steam, everything is getting discarded through the nozzle, which is a mess. To avoid that mess I 3D printed some blocks of porous ceramic material and impregnated them with potassium permanganate. That worked better, but I can only print blocks so big. If I want to scale this up, I can't really 3D print blocks of ceramic. So, I think I have an idea. If I mix the potassium permanganate with some plaster and let it harden, I can then use it over and over again without spending the permanganate. Nice. Okay, let's try this in a closed chamber. You see this? So this is a 2.5 milliliter uh, syringe, which means I put about uh, 1.5 milliliters of peroxide inside of it, and it filled up this entire syringe, which I think is 350 milliliters. Because the plaster thing is working so well, I think I'm gonna try to do a new rocket with it. Yeah, let's give it a try. Um, so I made some more plaster. And what I'm going to do now is line the interior of this tube with plaster to create kind of a, a layer that is going to act like the catalyzer on the next rocket. Oh, I'm going to try to do a decent job. I'm not very good with this kind of stuff. Okay, now I'm going to set this aside to dry for about an hour. In the meantime, I need to do the body of the rocket. So I 3D printed these. Um, these are two caps for the cylinder with the plaster. This has tiny holes, as you can see, is the injector which means it injects the hydrogen peroxide into the chamber. Um, and these are two caps for a syringe. It actually is not a syringe, it's a syringe pump. I basically use um, a soda bottle with pressured butane to push the piston in the syringe and then push the peroxide inside the chamber. I think it's a pretty cool idea. Patent pending. Bonjour. As you can see, the plaster is now very dry. Let's assemble the rocket in So this goes in here. What do you mean? What do you mean? 
You stubborn little screw. How dare you? Okay. That is Das Guten. This here. Boom, boom, boom. Made this little little car for my rocket. Uh, it's made of wood and 3D printed wheels. It works fine. Should be good enough. Three, two, one. So I would say that was uh, interesting. Um, the other word would be underwhelming, I guess. Yeah, I, I was wrong. I mean, the plaster is clearly not working. The gunk is still coming out. Uh, I need to find another solution. In the 60s, there was this jetpack program called Rocket Belt, where they used hydrogen peroxide. And I read somewhere they used silver to decompose it. I got some silver, but the results were not great. After some research, I found out you need a lot of surface area for the silver to work, but as it turns out, silver mesh is even more expensive than regular silver. So I had another idea. There's this silver plating solution you can get that works like magic. You just dip a copper part into it and seconds later you have it covered in silver. I bought some copper wire mesh and I dipped it into the solution and it worked perfectly. In seconds, I had a silver mesh. Then I submerged the mesh into the hydrogen peroxide and it worked. It decomposes hydrogen peroxide pretty well. There's a catch though, because that would have been too easy. The hydrogen peroxide eats up all the silver coating. The silver is gone in less than a minute. Time to bite the bullet and spend some money on silver mesh. Even using the mesh, the results were still underwhelming. It's very slow. I can't believe I just spent a bunch of money on silver for nothing. Damn it! Please don't forget to subscribe. After some research, I found this guy that 20 years ago built a rocket bicycle using hydrogen peroxide. He has a video on his channel where he compares silver decomposing hydrogen peroxide to a mystery ceramic material that works much better. Now, I'm not even exaggerating when I say that it took me months and months to find out what this mystery ceramic material was. And when I finally did, I thought it was a little bit weird because the material in question is coconut charcoal. Yeah, I also had that reaction. I had this charcoal because I use it to center parts in the kiln. I dropped some hydrogen peroxide on it by accident and it worked pretty well. But why stop here? To be honest, there's nothing that decomposes hydrogen peroxide faster than potassium permanganate. So I impregnated the charcoal with Z stuff and that worked wonderfully. Wow. So I have a bunch of different ways of decomposing the hydrogen peroxide. Fancy charcoal, silver, potassium permanganate, that's all very well and good, but my peroxide has too much water and that is ruining everything. I need to find a way to get rid of some of the water. 50% concentration is not enough. I need something like 65 or 70% or more. The first thing that comes into mind is basically boiling the water, right? If you have too much water in a solution, you boil it, you get a concentrated version of that solution. Simple enough, right? Yeah, too simple. That would be too good to be true. The problem is if you try to boil the hydrogen peroxide water solution, yes, you do boil some water, but you also end up decomposing hydrogen peroxide, which is basically no bueno. It takes you back to square zero. Luckily, I think I found a way around it. I have this friend named Carlo. He has a YouTube channel called Backyard Ballistics. He told me he was able to concentrate hydrogen peroxide up to 85% to the point he could use it straight up as a combustion enhancer. Here's the secret. Carlo doesn't boil the water off. He evaporates it. Is there a difference? Yeah. To boil the water, you need at least 100 degrees Celsius, which basically decomposes the hydrogen peroxide. But to evaporate it, well, to evaporate it, you can do it very slowly at 60 degrees Celsius. You don't decompose the hydrogen peroxide, but it takes a long, long time. I gave it a shot. And it took a while, but in the end, the peroxide was definitely more concentrated. It behaved differently when I threw permanganate at it. And when it was done decomposing, there was less water in the end. Unfortunately, I know it's not 85% concentration because it didn't really help combust the cotton. Now, as I was playing around, I mixed some permanganate into the cotton and gave it a go. And something insane happened. The cotton caught fire on its own with no ignition whatsoever. 
In that moment, I had an epiphany. Do you know that foam people use to put flowers in? That material can absorb a lot of water, is also very light and very combustible. Do you see where I'm going with this? I cut some flower foam into shape and dipped it into the permanganate, dried it in the kiln and gave it a test. And let me tell you, it works very well. Now, I wanted to test this properly and I wanted to compare it to another rocket that I made. A couple of videos ago I made an oxygen butane rocket and put it on top of a skateboard. It performed well, but to get enough oxygen to make it work, I needed to use this enormous and heavy bottle of gaseous oxygen. On the test that I did earlier, I used 20 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide that weighs much less. To inject the peroxide into the chamber, I 3D printed this slingshot mechanism that uses a rubber band to press the 20 milliliter syringe full of peroxide. As an injector, I'm using a simple brass tube with 0.6 millimeter holes all over it. Let's give it a test. Three, two, one. So my concept of a rocket is still not as powerful as a conventional rocket using oxygen. But keep in mind that I only use 20 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide, which means there's a lot of room to be improved. My priority now is to concentrate hydrogen peroxide, because if I do that, I can get much better results. To be honest, I don't really know how to categorize the rocket you just saw. Is it a hybrid, a monopropellant, a bipropellant, hypergolic? What I do know is this reaction has a lot of potential. And something else I want to do with it is power turbines. During the Second World War, the reaction I used in this video was used to power the turbo pumps of the V2 rocket, the grandfather to all liquid fueled rocket engines. The V2 might be 80 years old, but you would be surprised on how similar it is to modern rockets. I want to make a series of videos about the evolution of rockets and rocket engines, and perhaps build a functional model of the V2 rocket. A scaled version, of course. To be able to make this series, I'll be posting it as an exclusive at Nebula, a platform you probably already know, because it's the perfect place for creators to level up and do their dream projects. And this is my dream project. This is a platform made by creators and ran by creators. I'm talking about real engineering, with awesome Nebula regionals such as the logistics of D-Day or Battle of Britain. The Battle of Britain was the first major military campaign fought entirely by air, and after an humiliating defeat by the German, led to the development of the V1 and V2 rockets. Also mustered with a super interesting video about the B-2 aircraft and the engineering difficulties of making a stealth aircraft capable of carrying large air-to-surface standoff weapons. With Nebula you get access to an insane amount of videos, podcasts, classes and a peek behind the curtain on how creators make their videos. All of this with no ads for just $30 a year, which is basically $2.5 a month. On this holiday season you can also get lifetime access to Nebula by doing a one-time payment of $300. What that means is that you get access to Nebula to the end of times by paying just once. You will never have to worry about your subscription again. And right now for the holidays, you can even gift a lifetime membership. Watch with friends and family. I mean, you've heard about Netflix and chill. How about Nebula never watch ads again? Did I mention they don't have ads? This money is used to help creators like myself do better content. If you sign up using the link below, you will not only be directly supporting this channel, but also getting Nebula and Nebula classes for 40% off the annual plans. That's as little as $2.5 a month. If you already follow me on Nebula, thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. If you don't, give the link in the description a chance. I promise you will not regret it. See ya.